make sure that we are, our relationship is growing with God. And that's uh, what we want to try to do this evening. This is, six, this is uh, session eight in uh, our Bible study work for this year. With the theme for tonight's discussion is Christ came with a mission. Christ came with a mission. And the truth statement is, Jesus came to serve God and to set us free. Jesus came to serve God and to set us free. Now this is another one of those lessons where it's, it's really up there. It's really up there. It's one of the top lessons. You know, it's really up there. The good news is good, but Jesus, think about what this is what I'm telling you now. Jesus came to serve God and to set us free. There's no way that we could set ourselves free ourselves. And he gave of himself to do that. You know, tonight is, we're going to conclude the, the uh, second quadrant of volume three on the discipleship path. path. And uh, we've reviewed uh, a number of different lessons throughout, throughout our sessions here. Week one, we talked about serving God's kingdom. <coughs> And uh, we were to do that by what? Expending our time, our talent, and our resources to the upbuilding of God's kingdom. Each of us have talents that God has given us, have given us spiritual gifts. And we should be utilizing those gifts in helping uh, building his kingdom. Everything that we do should be what? Glorifying God. Not glorifying us, not glorifying man, but utilizing those talents truly to glorify God. During that week, uh, we, uh, we talked a, a lot about uh, in Luke 18, where we talked about the man who had everything. He had all the uh, riches. He had all the things that uh, truly uh, would make a man happy in his, in his, from his perspective. Uh, he was following. He thought he was following God's word. But then when Jesus asked him to sell all of his, all of his possessions, give him to the poor and come follow him, he got distressed. 
So truly, what was he following? Not Jesus. He had other idols. His idols were his possessions. And those things which he thought made him free or gave him joy here on earth. That's why it's very tough, as they say, for a rich man to be able to follow Christ and not truly <clears throat> give up all these worldly possessions. Our mindset should be on what? Killing off our old selves because we are having a sinful nature. And each and every morning we should be killing that off, taking up the cross, listening to God, listening to Christ, and following his word so that, again, we will be obedient to him and serving him and glorifying him. <coughs> so that's what we talked about in the uh, first week of our, uh, our sessions. Next week, uh, we discuss spreading good news. As disciples, we are, dis we are sent by uh, Jesus to embody the good news of the gospel with both our words and our lives. We talked about what a good feeling you have when you get good news about from your friends or from your relatives, when you hear something good about them, that's good news. And that makes us all feel good. But the greatest news was that Christ came for us to save us. And that is the good news. There's nothing that we could not save ourselves. We had to be saved by someone. And ultimately, throughout the Bible, now throughout history, there always had to be a sacrifice for the uh, sins of the world that man created, man and woman did to themselves. And there was always a sacrifice. There was always a lamb. There was always shedding of blood. But Christ was the ultimate lamb, the ultimate sacrifice, who came and saved, truly to save us. He was God himself, but he came as man so that we would have the ability to have eternal salvation. And that was such a great thing. Um, Last week, we discussed Christ came to us, and we are on his mission, and he is our solution. We are his mission, so he came here by God, the Son, and this was his mission to come for us, and he is our solution. Again, we don't have, uh, we cannot solve our own uh, problem. We cannot give ourselves eternal salvation. We did a little exercise where we identified superheroes and that we related, we related to uh, when we were young. And most of us agreed that our heroes were our champions because of what? Because we always pictured them and they always came, what? To save the day. People would be in trouble. We would always see somebody being in trouble or somebody uh, having problems. Whatever it is, that superhero always coming right in the nick of time to save that person. So again, that's what our hero. We admired that. We looked up to that. But the ultimate hero is Christ, who came to save us. We had those, we had those superheroes, but Christ is the superhero. He is, you know, there, there just does not have been another hero like him. Because again, surely we can't do it ourselves, can we? No, we cannot. Christ came again. He was God. He is God, but he allowed himself to come as a natural man and not to use any of those powers, any of those gifts that he had himself. He walked in our steps. He felt just like we felt. He was tempted, just like we are tempted day in and day out. But he was perfect. He did not get into it at all. <clears throat> and he did that for what? For us. Because again, our sinful nature, if we get up each and every day, we're not going to be able to save ourselves. We are going to sin at some time each and every day, whether it's by action, whether it's by thought, whether it's by it, some aspect of your life, we will be sinning. But Christ came, really, to give <coughs> us salvation. So we have to be thankful for him. We have to be thankful to God uh, for allowing Christ to come to truly save us. 
we had talked a little bit last week about how important it is for us to truly be uh, what responsible and be thinking about other people that uh, we know that we have come across and it's a blessing when we can try to enter into their lives to sow a seed with them to do something for them and one of the most powerful things that we can do when we know that someone is either struggling or haven't heard the gospel or they are fighting the, against the word is for us to pray to God to pray to God to ask to intercede for that in, them, in that individual and so what we're going to do before we get into tonight's lesson and we talked a little bit about last night last week and I know we've got an outer perimeter there but I would like each and every person to just get with them, get at a table and let's just we're going to take five to ten minutes and we're going to pray for those people that you either thought about if you have not thought about that you know that really truly needs to hear the gospel that really uh, that we want to focus in on because again God answers prayer our biggest asset is prayer. We might think we can do all these things. We can't change any of people's minds. We can sow the seed. We can do these things. But prayer is a, is a, is a gift that God has given us to intercede for others across the board. So we're going to take, like I said, about five to ten minutes, and we're going to do this. We're going to pray for uh, those who, again, you think needs to be, not who needs to be saved, but who needs to hear the gospel or will help you in interceding, help you, God will give you the direction of how to uh, be able to intermingle, to, inter, uh, to be able to exchange uh, in, uh, just your yourselves in their lives. Uh, we're going to just do that for like five to ten minutes, okay? Thank you, Lord God. 
God for each and every one of you for interceding for those who have not heard the gospel or who will make us say maybe on the test but that's something that's really critical that is our mission that's what this uh, whole uh, Bible study is about not only is spreading his word spreading the gospel spreading the good news but engaging with others discipling others so that their relationship with God can get stronger and we uh, as they get stronger they'll have a a better relationship with God. Okay, we're going to move into the nice lesson. Let's go ahead and open a word of prayer. Dear Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, again for this opportunity to be with you, to study your word, Lord, to, to discuss your word, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, uh, for actively being in our lives, Lord, for engaging with us, Father God, for redeeming this world, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to touch those who are, who are saved and who are truly know the word, Father God. We ask you for those, Father God, that you that are have a willing heart to go out and spread your word, Father God. Truly give us wisdom, Father God. Give us clarity of mind as we study your word, Lord. In this session and in, 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 in all of our individual sessions, Father God, let us truly understand what you would have us to do for you, Father God, in being true servants unto you, Father God. To answer your, your, your cry, Father God, to go out and, and save a dying world, Father God. So we just want to be instruments unto you. We thank you for this opportunity to to serve you, Father God, and we praise you. And so pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, we're going to start off with the secret millionaire. I know most of y'all have, have uh, <coughs> some of you may have seen the secret millionaire. How, how many people know about the secret millionaire? Saw that as a TV show on TV? None. Oh, one. There you go. <laughs> is that, was it that old? Is, that, is, is it, no, is it, I know because I'm, you're trying to say I'm an old man. Hey, I know about it. Hey, you're oh, together. Okay. Right. Me and you. Can you raise your hand? Right here. <laughs> we old. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought it was, maybe it was old. 
but it truly was about a uh, millionaires who basically wanted to go out. They might have some other versions of that with uh, today's show. I know I've seen this recently within the, I mean, not too far ago, not too, not too far off, where, where, uh, well, something like undercover balls, like where you going out and you're hiding your, your identity to, uh, and these were millionaires, and they wanted to live with the people and, and try to uh, understand, you know, what it was being like. You know, they had every answer, every need that they wanted to answer for themselves as they thought, because they had riches, you know, they're millionaires. So they went to either uh, projects that they may own or, or, and people wouldn't know who they were, but they really wanted to understand how it would be to uh, live under those circumstances where they would not have, they, they, they cut themselves off totally, so they could not go back and say, hey, hey, I got money over here, I can go buy this, or whether well, I need something to eat, or I need electricity, whatever it may be. Uh, they really want to get a good understanding of that. And uh, as far as, it could be a, an interesting thing because at the end, they wanted to help these people. They knew what they had gone through. So they then reached out to them and whatever needs that they had come about, that they found out about them, they answered those needs for them, really from a physical perspective. Whether it was money, whether it was food, whether it was housing, whether it was jobs, whatever the situation was, that's what they answered. So they were had a sense of helping people. So the question is, how do you feel when you have an opportunity to help people? Do 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 we help? Do you help people? <laughs> <laughs> yourself too because you um, you know depending on the situation it just you just you get something out of it that you didn't necessarily expect I mean not that you go into it at least for me I don't go into it expecting to get anything out of it um, I just like to help people but I always get something out of it and what, what is it you get out of um, sense that I, um, well, first of all, it's humbling, okay, because some of the people that I've helped, I've been in their shoes, so I know where they've come from, and I can also relate, I feel I can relate to the situation, and so I'm able to, to share with them how I grew in their situation and things like that, so I get, you know, I, it, it helps me to realize that, hey, I'm not where I used to be, which is a good thing, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of interesting to say if you do it is a feeling of you know like, like you said that you really help somebody I remember years ago going back home in DC and I think it was on New York Avenue I saw a guy in the middle and um, didn't know who he was from you know as I was coming up to him so and you know like you have some folks that are you know, looking for money or whatever so I pulled over as I was coming up and and I handed him some money and I looked up and I said Toby? And this is a guy I went to high school with, I went to elementary school with, I played football with, you know, and it just kind of shocked me. But as I'm riding, you know, uh, as y'all know, I cry a little bit. I'm saying, well, why, you know, you know why, why me and not, you know, why him and not me, right? And, and so, you know, it, it, it made me go back to do a lot of studying, a lot of reflecting, and a lot of just thanking God for, what he's done for me, you know, because uh, uh, it was, you know, it was like he just put it out there, like, you know, it was almost like he said, hey, look, look what I'm doing. It's almost like, when I, look what I've done for you, you know, so it was a very humbling experience just to see that, you know, so, uh, yeah, and I tried to go back to, to find him, but he wasn't there. I think he probably was a little more embarrassed at who I, you know, because we hadn't seen each other in years, but it was just pretty, pretty humbling to, to El, see that. Elvin Cherry was on a team with him. Uh, he said he played with him. 
<laughs> you picked up on that. I know somebody would pick up on that one. You practiced with him. <laughs> you I was the starting him. running back. Right <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got the real on, 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 on the uh, on the swim team. We got gotcha. you. Right. Uh, what are some of the more significant needs that you may have seen here uh, from a, the congregation's <clears throat> perspective or the community? Are those things out there that? Uh, you see on an ongoing basis, day in and day out, that you've come across that you think that uh, could help, you could use, you could step in to do uh, some uh, godly things um, that would to help out? Yes, no, maybe? Well, when you see yes. somebody, when you see somebody uh, some holding the sign saying hungry or won't work for food or whatever, um, you know, a lot of times we look at it and say, well, if I give them money, we, we, um, we interpret it in the, in, a, in the wrong way or in a way that we think, we, we create a scenario in the way that it might happen. So we won't necessarily give them money, so what you can do is take them grocery shopping or take them, um, go take them to the store and buy them some food or things like that, some simple things like that. That's one example. Yeah. Might guess. need to ride, things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess that's for me is a touchy situation. I have to pray about it, that God will help me, because a lot of times I'll see them out there, and I'll see them with their signs, because you see it so much, it's mm -hmm. starting to be a norm. But yet I would have passed multiple stores, help wanted, and it's not far from where they are. So sometimes I think they choose to do that because that's what they do. And then sometimes I find myself because I know a certain area where they be and I have to come home from work, this same place, and I'm watching and I'm looking and I see them go in the woods and I see them go over there with a mobile phone and they're talking in the woods. So it makes it difficult for me to, to see past what I'm seeing. And then I say to myself, well, Lord, how do I want to be led by God? But how do you discern who's real and who isn't? Because it's, it's such, it's very popular now. Mm -hmm. So I find myself constantly, Lord, I ride by them and I, Lord, forgive me, I hope this wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? So it makes it very difficult in the times that we live in now. Right. Well, I, I would just say to you, it's, it's, I think it's, I know personally it's just a great feeling when you're able to help somebody uh, across the board. That's people who are in need, as far as, as some of the situations we're talking about here, seeing people, you really need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, open up your hearts and your minds for that discernment because the Holy Spirit will lead you at times and when you, you, you're questioning. Don't, I would say not to question, if you're led, you should follow that lead because the Holy Spirit is there. He is, in, he is in, in each of us and we just need to make sure that we are listening and we are being led by Him. If He's not leading you, hey, it may not be an opportunity for you to, to enter that situation, but it always feels good. And the bottom line, though, just like the secret millionaire, is that people need help. We need help. And Christ came for us because we needed his help. He came and lived in our shoes. He lived just as man and woman uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, as I said, being tempted across the board, but never sinned. He was obedient to the Father. And that's, again, aren't we thankful that he gave up himself to come to be in our lives, to save our lives? Yes. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. Um, I know that prayer is not a substitute for giving. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're in a situation where you're not led to give, I still think it's a person that's standing out there. They got a problem. Yes. And maybe they're trying to deceive you to get money, but there's something that's there's a problem there. Mm -hmm. and they need some help. And so it might not be money that they need. That's right. They might need something yeah, else. That's they right. can't discern. So, you know, you could you at least pray as God to right. you know, reveal to you what can be helpful to them. Because, I mean, I I don't think you can make enough money standing there <laughs> to be really happy. I think you're out right. there because there's something else that's going on either in your mind or, you know, and at the very least, they need to be saved. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And what a gift that is. Again, as we said before, prayer. 
That's one of the greatest gifts God gave us, to pray for someone, to intercede for someone. We can always do that at all times. Whether you know people or you don't know them, let's all lift up prayers to, for, for whatever their needs may be. Because that's what we're here. We should be doing that. Okay? All right, let's un no, unpack the story here. And it's our, our, our lesson really is on uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. It's, uh, as you can see, probably in your books there, that uh, it's also referred to at, at times as the uh, hymn to Christ. So what we'll do, let's read that. So I can get somebody to grab that, that scripture. We'll break it down and look at it and spend some time in it. Um, we'll see... Christ's pre-existence, his incarnation, his death, resurrection, and his uh, ascension to the right hand of the Father as we go through this uh, scripture. So I'm get somebody to read it. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, exist, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity, and when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All right. So what's, when you look at this, the first one, uh, first verse, verse 5, Adopt the same attitude as that of Jesus Christ. What's your initial, what is uh, your initial reaction to just that particular verse there? What do we think it's saying to us? Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. I believe ESV version has another version. It says, it says have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus. So when we see that verse, what do we, what do we think it's saying? What, what do we see there? How do, what's, that, what's your reaction when you see that verse? Exactly. Humble servant. Humble servant. Okay. All right. What else? Anything else? We have work to do. Yeah, we do have work to do. Mm -hmm. Anything else? We should respond to the calling the same way Jesus did. Exactly right. And all of those are right. What we see here is right there in that verse there is it's basically behavior model, modeling, mm -hmm. right there. And that and that and that's just in that verse alone, which you know, basically it says we should, basically it's saying we should have the same values, right? We ought to be one that, <clears throat> that Christ had for us, giving up ourselves that we was talking earlier about being servants. So that's you know when you look at that that, that um, we go back to look at verses one through four. And I think it really uh, explains, <clears throat> leads us right into what verse 5 is. If you look at verses 1 through 5, it says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, and I'm reading from the ESV version, and any comfort, love, and any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, and any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love being in full accord and of one mind, doing nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than others, than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. So again, that's what Christ does. That's what Christ did. That's what Jesus did when he came. He looked at the, for the interest of others. He actually came here when we... We, when he came here, he came here as, an, as being obedient to the Father, and he came to save to save humanity, right? So that's what we see here. That's what we see right here in this particular verse. Let's look at uh, verse six. Um, it says, "Who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God 
as something to be exploited. What do we see there when we look at that scripture? He was very humble. But Jesus was, Jesus was who? That, 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 script, that portion of the affirmation of his deity. That's exactly right. Jesus, Jesus was the son of God, mm -hmm. right? Jesus had all power. Jesus was, was, was existence, as we said earlier, and he came down as being obedient to the Father and Yes, we talked last week about him being fully man and fully God, but he didn't give up any of his powers. He didn't give up who he was. He was still God. But here we can see that, you know, as it says right here, he, he said, <laughs> existing in form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Right? So he, he, he came to... to to, to he, like you said earlier, he humbled himself. And this is what we really see right here is, is his, his humility right here in this particular scripture. Yes. It reminds me of sort of my attitude toward uh, foreign missions. Uh, uh, I have a, have a strong calling to go, but when I think about it, if I got that strong calling to go, you know, how would I approach that? Because the way I approach it now, since I don't sense the strong calling, if you go, and I can help you go, I want you to the one to go. Mm -hmm. And to me, when you look at that, that could be seen as exploiting the fact that I got money to keep the going. Right, to keep the going. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. rather than go, if I get told to go, go yeah. I'd send somebody else to pay for it. So, I mean, and so Christ had this power, you know, that, you know, he could have done some things without going. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly right. But, you know, yeah. fit but being obedient to the Father, mm -hmm. right, he came down. It's, uh, somebody grab uh, John 1 and 1. Somebody grab, um, uh, let's grab Hebrews 1 and 3. Because I think it's important so that we can see who Jesus was when you'll see it here in these scriptures. So he's telling you right there. <laughs> That's who he was. He was there. He was there in the beginning. So then, let's go to Hebrews. I think Pastor might even mention this in one, one of his uh, uh, message. So let's go to Hebrews 1 and 3. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Mm -hmm. yeah. After making purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of So again, that just shows you the support there for. I love the way God's word supports. Scripture supports scripture. It's right here. A lot of times when we when we are um, trying to understand something, we can go and reference other scriptures that it will it will be to show us what this really truly means here. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to verse seven. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant and taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had when he had come as a man. So when we look at that scripture, what's happening there? What do we see? Somebody grab uh, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. Hope you told me before we go there, what do we see? What do we see happening there? When, when he said that he emptied himself. What do we see happening there? When he said that he emptied himself. He was selfless. Selfless? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it also helps include the previous verse and understanding that uh, he didn't see his own value as God was to stay God, right? Right. He saw quite a bit of his value was to come and serve man as man. As man. Somebody, somebody grabs 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. Yeah. For, you know, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though you was rich, 
it for your sake he became poor, mm -hmm. so that you by his poverty might become rich. Was it rich with money? Now, when, when I read that, I, it took me back to the, the author there when he was talking about used when he used for the example the um, uh, the millionaires and how they stepped down. And then, as you read the example that was used there, um, the uh, what stuck out to me was is the time that the millionaires were there. They, they stayed there for a while that they took the same salaries as the people that were there because suppose that they didn't, right? Just living there and still being able to afford, still being able to do the things that they would normally do, would they ever experience uh, the same suffering, the same hardships that the people that they were living with? That they wouldn't because, they, because, because if they got to a point where uh, their stomach started growling or they needed to go get something, they could easily go do what? They just go buy it, right? And so again, when you look at Christ, when he became human, right? And, and, and when, he became, when, he, when he became man, you could see that he did, he, he did this, he did suffering here. So now I left my glasses again. I'm going to look at something here. If we look All right, let's go to uh, verse 8. He humbled himself by uh, becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the cross. Let's get some discussion on that. What do we see there? What does that mean? Sacrifice. He did sacrifice. Yes. Somebody grab Romans. Five and nineteen. Obedience is doing the work that the father told him to do. Great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though it was costly, too. Hmm? Obedience, even though it was costly. Even though it was costly. Mm -hmm. That's right. Somebody grab Romans 5 and 19. The crucifixion that was going on there, and we look at it during the Roman time, during, during the times in Rome, that was uh, the worst penalty uh, that you could accept. Crucifixion was, it was the ultimate indignity. Uh, it, it was, it was you, when you got crucified, they say you were beyond attempt, right? So, this, and that's the way God died for, that's the way Jesus died for us, right? He suffered the worst death. He suffered the, a, a true, he could have come down off the cross. I know we've heard it before, but this is really showing us him as, you know, what he, again, he didn't ever stop being God. But because he loved us so much, you could really see his love, that he loved us so much, he stayed up there on that cross. Let's go to verse, for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, so at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of our God the Father. These verses really, you know, it shows us, uh, you know, the, it helps us understand Jesus' true mission and when he, what he came to do. And that was... To, to die and to save save humanity, but he but he didn't do it honestly. He didn't do it for us. He did it because of the Father, right? It's his, it's his obedience to the Father, and through that we were saved. Through that 
we were adopted into his family, those that believe and those that, that uh, uh, trust Jesus Christ as his Savior, as, the, as our Savior. Let's go to, we're going to go unpack the story. Hmm. I like this because it says that there's a common misconception regarding the reasons why Jesus' uh, presence, in our, his presence in our world. Specifically, many people believe humanity was the driving force between behind the incarnation, that Jesus came to us simply because we needed him so desperately. <clears throat> Certainly, it's true, yes, we did need Jesus, right? But the important to understand that God was the primary motivation for Jesus' incarnation, not us. He came to serve the Father. So we look at, uh, when we look back at Philippians 2, 6, and 7, it says, Paul reinforced the truth that Jesus is God. The Son has always existed in the form of God. However, in order to accomplish God's mission to redeem the world, Jesus willingly emptied himself in order to take on the form of man. Specifically, Paul said, Jesus became a servant. But not to us, <laughs> right? Jesus did Jesus didn't bend his will to accommodate the, the desires of people. Rather, Jesus willingly emptied himself in order to serve God. It shows verse 8 continues the same idea. By humbling himself, Jesus was obedient to God's will over and above our needs. Why is it, and then it's a question here that says, you know, why is it dangerous to believe that uh, Jesus' mission was based exclusively on our needs? And so both and I went round and round. So we we uh, just talking about that. So it's a good question. So um, uh, you guys can help me with that question. <laughs> so let's let's talk about, let's think about that question. It's the danger of that is to put too much emphasis on man mm -hmm. instead of putting the emphasis Also, we person like said earlier, it's not about us, it's about God, it's about what we're doing for God. And we, when we remove ourselves, you know, even when we get in those situations where we we, we see people that, as you were saying, sister, that you, um, you want to help, but you don't want to help, and you know, it's but sometimes we have to say, well, okay, Lord, I'm not doing this, I, I know I don't want to do it, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm you know, but I'm, I'm, I just it's not about me, it's about God, it's just it's, it's even suffering. And we even our suffering, it's not about us, right? But when we it says we're gonna suffer for Christ. Yeah. Right? It's not about us, it's about us. And and we if we remember that sometimes, I mean I know 
it, it is hard when you're going through, right? And then sometimes it feels like, you know, you say, okay, Lord, now, all right, now, we've been doing this a while. I need you to show up. You know, but when we kind of remember that and what we're going through and things that are happening, it ain't, it's not about us. It's what God is, as you said earlier, is what, is what God has us going through, that we can look at all of the testimonies you have that you can share with somebody about something that you went through, now that you've gone through, and when you didn't think you were going to make it through. <laughs> but now you can share. This is not about us. It's about what, what we're doing for God. You would think, too, that, I think it's, it's said, said that if, if if Jesus' primary mission was motivated by our needs, then we receive all the glory, right? Mm -hmm. The glory is robbed of God, and, it's, and it goes to us, right? Mm -hmm. But then we even see in the Old Testament that whenever God said he's going to save his people, Israel, he never he never says, I'm going to save them because of you or anything. He says, I'm going to save them because of my name, so my for name. my glory, right? Uh, I'm glorify my name, so... It, even though he cares for his children, his people, but that's not his motivation. His motivation is his own self-glory. That's right. That's right. So he saves the people for for himself. So yeah, it's very dangerous because we start to move into man-centered uh, theology, right? Uh, glory of self. That's right. We see a scripture that they, one of the scriptures that they reference here is uh, John uh, six and three and eight. This is for uh, where it says, "For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of who sent me." Mm -hmm. And it says that Jesus understood his mission was to serve God and to glorify him. It is great news for us that by doing so, he became our salvation. As disciples of Jesus, then, we're called to the same mission, carry the same purpose. As disciples of Jesus, then, we are called to the same mission, to carry the same purpose, to serve God and to honor him. And as well, and as we'll see throughout the study, it says some ways we serve and honor God is by actively serving and witnesses to others. So the question is, is what are some of the practical, on a practical level, what does it mean to serve God? To love others, to help and love others. To love others, to help and love others. Everybody in here has a voice. I don't want to stop pointing at people. <laughs> Y'all know I will. Yeah. And some is putting others' needs before yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right. Anybody else? Well, you follow and you follow his word. And as people see that you have switched up from the old way. in proper terms or in, in common linguistic terms as it focuses on the um, the external activity that we do as a task for someone mm -hmm. to be someone. But spiritually speaking, that's one of the areas that, that is common is just to do the task and forget that really when we're talking about service to our Lord, everything has to start from the beginning. I was thinking about this as spiritual biblical scheme of our sanctification always begins with knowledge of God and then love for God and then obedience to God mm -hmm. and then we can worship God and serve him. But if we, if we just go straight to service and we forget mm -hmm. our knowledge of his revelation of himself to us right. and then our obedience to him and then our pursuit of holiness, then the service that we're doing is truly not genuine. And I think I like taking the example of Mary and, 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 and her sister uh, Mary was just sitting down listening to our Lord and she was pretty much endeared by his teaching and she was just looking forward to receiving you know, him or having himself to her. That was true genuine love and obedience and that's exactly what God wanted for her at that moment. Mm -hmm. But then her sister was busy serving and she was truly doing the typical service that we think about as doing a task for someone that is pleasing. But what she didn't really have in her heart was God's will for her at the moment. She was doing all these things, trying to cook for the Lord and serve him, but her heart wasn't yet in awe of his presence, which is the very important thing to begin with. So I think when we're doing service, when we're talking about service mm -hmm. in the church, 
He needs to start with a true reverence for who God is, right. is the knowledge of God and, and true love for him. Because if the love is not there anyway, then our service is just external, you know, external task or, and, and accomplishing task mm -hmm. for the love, which is not um, which, which is not genuine. That's right. So if I'm ushering every Sunday, then when I leave on Sunday and I go raise hell at the the restaurant, <laughs> then I'm probably not being obedient, am I? But I, I can tell you I just serve. <laughs> I'm doing it every Sunday. I love the Lord. <laughs> so, you hear it all the time. And, and as Pastor was saying, God did things for his own glory. So if God did things for his glory, then what should we be doing? Mm -hmm. What should we should be doing is for his glory. That's right. That's right. We should be doing things that glorify him. Mm -hmm. When you do it, and you don't even really think about it. Right. You're doing it for God. You're doing it to glorify God. Right? That's right. Um, I know earlier... We went into, uh, I saw you guys in prayer, where we, we spent some time um, praying for those that uh, uh, we want to disciple. We want to be praying for those that we, we believe are lost, so we wanted uh, God to open their hearts so that they would uh, receive, we would receive God. So I know we did that earlier. So um, as we begin to, to close out and get ready to go into the, I guess I think that's another section that, that starts next week. Um, let's just get in a circle and let's just kind of pray about and just ask God to uh, help us be bold as we go out and we do his mission and we do it truly for the glory of God and the love of our Savior Jesus Christ and just knowing what he did for us on the cross. something shortly and then I'll ask the pastor to pray it says, Jesus is our salvation which means he is our only hope to experience freedom in a spiritual sense Jesus' death and resurrection are the only door through which we can pass and receive forgiveness and spiritual life yet spiritual freedom isn't the only type of freedom Jesus offers those who follow him he can also set us free from our fears and our doubts he can also free us from emotions that overwhelm us. He can set us free from physical or financial burdens that weigh us down. He can even set us free from need to control every aspect of our lives to solve our problems in our own strength if we let him. Yes, sir, please pray for my family as we forget very much. Father, we just thank you, first and foremost, we thank you for sending your son Jesus yes. there in obedience uh, to your will. He willingly came, he humbled himself as a servant to take on humanity, uh, to serve us uh, by his death on the cross. God, we thank you, Lord, that uh, he would serve us in such a way that he would uh, condescend himself to become human, even humiliate himself on the cross, God, all for our sake, Lord, all for your glory. So, God, we thank you for the forgiveness that has been provided to us for those who trust in your son, Jesus Christ. And, God, we just pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to not only uh, be in awe of what Jesus has done for us, Lord, that it would spur us 
on to be servants of others, Lord, that as we serve you, God, that we would serve you by sharing the good news to others, that we would love our neighbors by telling them the truth about the gospel, Lord. And also for forgiveness, God, that we would extend forgiveness to others because we have been forgiven. So help our hearts as we harbor any unforgiveness in our hearts, God. We were just praying, Lord, for the needs that have been expressed around this circle, God. For those who are facing surgery and those who have injuries, God, and those who are getting ready to go under the knife, God. We pray for your healing. We pray that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, you are the great physician, the great healer. We ask that you can do mighty things, God, according to your will. We thank you for Deacon Hardaway. We thank you for just blessing him. Continue to bless his recovery, God. Bless him, Lord, a little touch of a pneumonia, God. We pray that you would clear that up, God. Uh, bless his heart, Lord, with the rhythm of his be beating of his heart, God. Continue to strengthen him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray for those who are just going through right now, God. We pray for the Blango family, Lord. We pray for the death that has happened, Lord. We pray for you to be in the midst of that family, to bring them together in unity, God, as they grieve the loss of their loved one. Lord, we just pray for other families who are just going through right now, God. You are more than able to touch right now in the name of Jesus to, to be a blessing to them right now. And God, you know each and every request that has been mentioned, Lord. Lord, meet the need right now in the name of Jesus. You are sovereign. You are good. You are a wonderful and humble servant. Lord, you demonstrate your humility. But God, also it was demonstrated you have been exalted, God, because of what you have done for us. You have been exalted given a name above all other names, that, you, that Jesus is Lord and every knee shall bow. So God, we pray, Lord, send us out, Lord, to tell the good news that others will willingly bow the knee before they will be forced to bow the knee when you come, God. And everyone shall call you Lord, God. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for our teachers, Lord, who have facilitated, who has uh, brought these lessons together, Lord. Continue to bless them. Keep them. As we leave this place, we pray that you would just bless us as we go on our way. And until we gather again, we give your name all the honor, all the praise. No glory to us at all, but to you all the glory. May you receive it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.